Hello, we're live with Talk to WCTV. My name is Karen Kirk. I'm the general manager of WCTV. And tonight is the fourth installment of Talk to WCTV. Talk to WCTV is a live show. You can call in tonight, which is January 2nd, at 657-4066, right on the bottom of your screen. You can call and ask our guest any question you'd like, or you can call and ask me any question about access cable television, about some of the programs that we produce at WCTV, and also how you, as a Wilmington resident, can get involved at WCTV. Uh, WCTV is the community television studio located at the basement of the Swain School. And we want as many Wilmington residents and people who work in Wilmington to get involved in their local cable studio. I know a lot of people are out there because we have um, been growing a huge number in our audience for Talk to WCTV. So we'd like some of the viewers who are sitting at home uh, to call in and ask questions about access and to also ask questions to our very special guest. Our very special guest tonight on Talk to WCTV is the original, no, the second president of WCTV. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that more. I'd like to introduce, and I'm very proud to inter introduce, Charlie Gilbert. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Karen. Nice to be here. Was I, did I misspeak when I got confused about the presidencies? Mm, well, in one context, I guess you did. Uh, initially, uh, when we started forming the corporation before it was formed, uh, there were co-chairmen, which was not really a good idea in any organization, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> and uh, after a few initial meetings, we started doing the bylaws. Uh, it was decided by unanimity that uh, Ed Ryder would be chairman. And I, at that time, became treasurer. And of course, as time went on, and not too much of it, uh, Ed died. And I don't know whether it was my age, or the fact that I was treasurer, or the fact that I was co-chairman, or maybe they just liked the way I looked, but I became president of the <laughs> And uh, held that position for uh, almost three years. Uh, it was an interesting experience, because while I had been uh, chairman or president of several organizations, more than a few, I'd say, uh, I knew absolutely nothing about television. <laughs> and uh, nor did I know anything about setting up a not-for-profit corporation, which, of course, was, was what we were in the process of doing. Well, the television part is comparatively easy, because you can hire somebody to do that. But the setting up a, a corporate organization as an on-the-job trainee is not an easy task. What was the first step you took? Call lawyers? Well, no, we, well, we had a lawyer. We had a lawyer. But we had a set of bylaws, which, of course, uh, had to approve, had to be approved, rather. And uh, you'd be surprised how difficult it is to get 15 people to agree on 60 pages of bylaws, because they've got to agree, pretty much. Perhaps not unanimously, but closely enough so that when everything is said and done, there's no friction. And no, no, no one's sitting out there saying, well, I don't agree to that. Because the fact of the matter is that uh, one cannot worry too much whether or not one person agrees with everything, as long as all of them agree on, say, 90% of the things. Then at least we know we're going in the right direction. And ultimately, that came to pass. It took us about oh, nine or 10 months altogether. And in those days, we were holding double meetings, at least. What do you mean committee, by double meetings? Committee meetings, we were holding twice a month, just to get this done. And any other business that came in uh, pretty much fell upon the president's shoulders, and he just tried to wing it. Do whatever, what, do whatever I had to do, answer the mail. Uh, we, didn't, we did not have a uh, clerk at the time. We had a secretary of the corporation, but most of the people were employed in full-time jobs, and it was difficult to have minutes transcribed and so forth. Finally, I got a lady who was still with us that uh, became the clerk for us, and uh, 
well, it was a lot easier asking somebody to type up minutes than trying to hunt and peck yourself, because I'm not a typist either. <laughs> it must be difficult uh, working with 15 people who also do this only part-time. Oh, of I course. I mean, it's not their full-time job. Well, of course, that's true. But uh, I think uh, in the case of most volunteer work, uh, you find the same situation. The big trick, in my mind, when you're dealing with volunteers, is to make sure that, uh, that when they come, that they have something to do. In other words, they're not sitting around looking and waiting, well, what am I doing here? Because I have other things I could be doing. So when you do have a meeting, you get, this, get it started on time, go through the business you have to go through, and if it takes an extra half an hour, usually no one complains. But if you keep them there just talking with one another, they become very disgruntled, and rightly so, because right. I feel the same way. Right. And I feel when, if you're calling a meeting for 7.30, then by 7.31, the gavel should be bouncing on the table, and you should be going ahead with whatever you've got planned. So that if you do, by some strange trick of fate, and we do occasionally now, things are running a lot more smoothly, happen to finish up around 9 o'clock and get out of here by half an hour early, it's a bonus. And I think everybody feels the same way about that. Now, in your reign as president, hmm. was there an issue or something that you installed that's still going on today? Anything that made a huge difference that, that is still happening today? Well, one that made a big difference to me personally was the, uh, was the um, getting, airing the uh, Talking Information Center because as it happens, one of the other committees I'm on is the Committee for Citizens with Disabilities. and at that time, two of our board members were blind persons, and one of them spoke to me about the Talking Information Center, and I had never heard of it. I had never had any reason to, of course. And uh, I thought that was uh, a good idea, and I explored it, and as fast as we could, and as I remember, it took us about five months to get all the information and the equipment we needed, but we did. We put it on the air. It's still on Channel 52. And it's, I think it's a great help. I've had comments on it since then for people that are visually impaired, whether or not they are permanently visually impaired. My wife has personally had five eye operations, and she can see well now, but there were many dark days. But for the people that are permanently visually impaired, this service brings them, oh, I forget exactly, but in the neighborhood of 25 periodicals and about five or six newspapers a day, if not more newspapers. I think it's more than that. So they can hear the newspaper? Yes, and that service is a voluntary service. So the only trouble is I've had people come to me in town, gee, I'd like to volunteer to do that, Charlie. And I said, well, if you do, you're going to have to drive down to Marshfield because that's where the studio is. <laughs> and of course, that puts a, puts a damper on that because it's, it's a tedious job, of course, and it's, I'm, I'm sure it's a labor of love, but uh, they have, I think, it's 18 hours a day of programming. You need a lot of readers to read right. for 18 hours. Even right. if you had one an hour, you still got to get 18 of them, and mm -hmm. you got to do it every day. Every day. Every day. So it's a lot. And I think that's, that's one of the things that sticks in my mind. So mainly, I think, getting this, getting this Access Corporation going all by itself. If I had quit then, and I, did, I haven't quit yet, as a matter of fact, but if I had quit then, I would have been satisfied because it was a tedious job, and uh, tedious in the sense that uh, you got to make sure you dot all the I's and cross all the T's. We had our, our uh, exemption form rejected by the Internal Revenue Service because in one part of our application, we abbreviated the corporate name in another place, we spelled it out. Oh. And we had to come yeah, back and change it. Yeah, you definitely need to dot those Everything's, everything's huh? got to be the same. And, you know, those are the things that took a lot of time. We got, the, we got the station on the air. We got two stations on the air. We have another one that we're talking about now in the, on the Finance Committee. I don't think it's got to the programming yet. But we're talking about now about putting Channel 56 on the air this year, even if we have to buy some uh, tapes of a educational nature to uh, fill up the airspace. We have the channel. We have not used it yet, and our feeling is that we probably had better use it before we lose it. What do you mean by use it before you lose it? Well, the Continental Cable came after 
they wanted two of our channels a few years ago, and uh, we declined to give them to them. And uh, who's to say what the value of a television channel, channel is, even in a town this size? And the fact of the matter is they do belong to us, but if we're not using them, I'm sure they could make a case with the Federal Communications Commission to say, well, you know, if they can't, if they don't use it, why shouldn't we? Yeah, so it's, it's a case to could our be made. I think. Interest. I think it's a, it would be a prudent move for us to go ahead, and I know we could use some more educational programming in town. We're not uh, not getting as much as I'd like to see, but I think sometimes I'm a little impatient. There are a lot of things I'd like to see that don't, haven't come to fruition, and perhaps I may never see them, but I'm sure they will happen. Now it sounds like the bylaws took a frustrating time. It was long. It was probably the hardest time oh, in definitely. history. Oh, definitely. It was uh, uh, <clears throat> until I finally realized what I should have, should have been doing all along. And as a matter of fact, I'm doing it again in, an, in another organization. But the, the trick to doing them, I found, is to get your list, whatever it is, and however long it is. In our case, I forget how many uh, sections there are. but. Uh, for the sake of discussion, let's say there are 30, okay? And there are probably 20 of those that you can get the 50, 15 people to go agree on right away. So what you do is you bounce right through them, and you agree on all the ones you can agree on. Then you put them aside, forget <laughs> about them. Those were easy. You, know, you just put them in a file cabinet and leave them. And you go back to the ones, and the ones that you have difficulty with, some of them will take two, three, four, some of them will take two meetings. No, I was going to say two, three, or four hours, but some of them will take five and six hours mm -hmm. because uh, maybe someone doesn't like the uh, line of succession, for instance. In this particular case, we have one that uh, the board as a group did not feel we needed an executive committee. And then uh, it was a little, little over a year ago that uh, we ran into a situation where we did not have a general manager which of course meant that we vitally needed an executive committee because the president in this corporation does not have any unilateral powers. So I spoke to the other office and I said, hey, we don't have an executive committee. It's going to have to be me, which is not really perhaps a good way to do it, but it turned out that I was the executive committee and what I did was the way this place ran for about three months. Well, you didn't have a general manager. Well, not only that, but I didn't have anybody to turn to, to for assistance. Mm -hmm. So I had got a couple of the volunteers, and I said, you guys, can you do this and do that? And we signed a few contracts, and away we went. And we ran, and we survived. Mm -hmm. And we did, our, we did our mush shows, you know, the selectmen's meetings and the school committee meetings, and many budget hearings at a very bad time, because last year was a very bad year for the town budget. We devoted a tremendous amount of time to that. And we still managed to put on a few voluntary shows at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we did. We were very lucky. I had great people helping me. Two of them are working here tonight. Paul and, uh, and Mac are working here tonight, and Jimmy Narduzzo was the third one. But uh, without the three of them, uh, I don't know how we would have survived last spring and uh, winter and spring because. Uh, you were it in was, limbo. Well, we would have been. We could have been. Yeah. You see? And I think the worst thing that could have happened to us at that time was to fall down, you know? And I don't think we even stumbled. Mm -hmm. I, but I think things went along as well, perhaps even a little better than they had been. So that but, sounds like your highest point. I was, that was my next question. Well, what was, was the highest that, point since? Well, I don't know if that was the highest point, but the fact that we, that we got through that time was certainly a very high point. It was very uh, gratifying to me, ego satisfying too, I might say, <laughs> because uh, after all, I had to steer it. And then, of course, now we've come into a, in a different situation uh, with a uh, new general manager yourself, uh, a young and articulate person that's uh, in here with a lot of ideas. And I, I see, now I see myself in a position where. Uh, I've done the best I could to, uh, to plow the fields and till the earth, so to speak, plant the seeds. Now let's, we've, got a, we've got the rest of the board and some young blood in here. I'll be out of here in uh, the spring anyway, and I'll be happy to sit back and see what happens. 
that's a good feeling. That's a very successful feeling to, like you say, plow the fields and then sit back and watch the fruits of your labor. Mm. Uh, and know in your heart of hearts, okay, that person's being successful, that person's being successful, but I started it all. Well, of course. That's a warm feeling. Well, as I say, as I said before, I didn't really start it all, but I came in on the on the ground floor of the corporation, and uh, there were there were 15 of us. The uh, the task force, the initial task force, was uh, instrumental, hugely instrumental in. Uh, Negotiating the contract with, well, at the time it was Colony Cable, uh, for an access studio because, as the former town manager uh, related to me, they tried to get Channel 6 to do some of these things that the town wanted done, and it was a question of they'd call them up and say, Well, we haven't got time, well, maybe we'll get to you next week, and as a consequence, nothing ever got done. Now, if we need a, a show to be done on the selectmen, for instance. We have a few volunteers. We've got a person to go down there and take charge of it. And we plug it in and we put a show on for the selectmen. If we have to do a town meeting, and I've done a couple of town meetings myself. In fact, in fact the, the last town meeting, I was there the whole 19 hours or so <laughs> for it. And that's what it took. And to make sure that things got done, and I had a lot of help there. Again. No one, I don't care who it is or who they think they are, this is, this is a very uh, uh, labor-sensitive type of business. It's uh, labor-intensive, I think, is a better word. Uh, not so much that you work hard, but it requires a lot of time, no matter what you're doing. It requires an awful lot of time, time that people don't see. They say, oh, a half-hour show, that's great. But a yeah, half-hour yeah, show that has any thought in it and you look at it, and you look at the people involved in it, and all of a sudden, the thing has blossomed up to 25 or 30 hours. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And you say, well, I can do that. Well, I wish some of the people who think they can do that would come down here and do it. Show us <laughs> how. Maybe we're not doing it properly. I would love to be shown how to do it. Again, we're live on January 2nd with Charlie Gilbert, 657-4066. Let's get that phone ringing. We need some questions here. Um, our first guest on Talk to WCTV was Susan Kufagasos, who's a big fan of yours. Mm -hmm. uh, she's now um, very active, not as active as I think she'd want to be, but she's still very active uh, at WCTV. Uh, she's a big fan of yours. Well, Susan uh, and, I, and I have hers. I took a look at her, uh, and I have for a couple of years uh, almost as a, another daughter. Uh, Susan is a very bright young woman, and uh, again, an, uh, an articulate young woman. I think uh, I think you younger people uh, have an edge on us, uh, your generation-wise, because uh, one of the reasons I think is television. You know, you are more articulate. You, you're not a, uh, you're not a afraid to get up and, and uh, speak your mind. Uh, part of it's that. Part of it, I think, is the way you brought up. But whatever, that's the way it is. Susan, unhappily, has taken a job out of town, and she doesn't have the time that she used to devote. I used to be able to... Uh, well, unhappily for us, happily for her. Well, for her, it's good. <laughs> yeah, for her. Oh, we have a call. Hello, you're live on Talk to WCTV. Hello? Hmm, try again. I hope we're not having any telephone problems. Um, Maybe somebody wants to talk to the tape. Um, to the answering machine? <laughs> yes. <laughs> As to get back to Susan, uh, having the job out of town, uh, up until uh, this past fall, I used to be able to give a call at the real estate office. Okay? And uh, whether I saw her today or tomorrow, usually it wasn't that much of a rush, but I could, uh, I could hop in and see her uh, when her mother had the real estate office uptown, same thing, yeah, you know, yeah. and leave a message. Let's try again. Um, I don't know what the problem with the telephone is, huh? Maybe they don't want to talk to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've had some very good programming successes with uh, Paul Dion and Jim Narduzzo, who is the second and third guest on the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, 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 these fellows have done a, a really remarkable job when you consider the, their amateurs, you know, amateur status. I think they've done some really uh, uh, 
great things. One of the things that surprised me uh, about Paul's work, when I uh, saw one of the first football games he did, he was able to follow the ball with a camera. I can't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you're live with Talk to WCTV. Hi. Um uh, it's okay to talk right to the TV, right? Sure, go right ahead. Um, turn down your TV because I can hear you through the telephone. Oh, okay. All right, I, I'm going in another room. Okay. I wanted to uh, uh, see if you had any plans for that program whereby people would send in funny tapes, bold movies and things like mm -hmm. that. It's like America's Funniest Home Videos, only it would be Wilmington people. Right. That was initiated by the second general manager, Marty. Uh -huh. uh, Marty McHugh. Um, I haven't gone with that so much, um, but yeah, that was an original plan by, by Marty McHugh. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. I was wondering if you would consider it again. Well, I would, but not as me being the producer. I would, I would love it if a resident of the town was the producer, and then that person could be the producer send out information to the papers, something on the community bulletin board, and then the resident would be the producer of the oh, show. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, all, the, all the shows, generally all the shows at WCTV are produced by residents. This is really the, the one show that I produce as general manager. Uh -huh. um, that was Marty's pet project, and Talk to WCTV is my pet project. Do you have to be um, authorized or just any volunteer? or? Yeah, what I like to do is I like to have my producers actually go through my access classes so that they not only know how to produce a show, mm -hmm. but also how to um, l use the equipment as well. I like my producers to be um, knowledgeable with the equipment. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to call me tomorrow, that's uh, Thursday, I can send you some information on how to become a producer at WCTV. Okay, great. Okay? All I'll right. be in 9 to 5 tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, that's kind of exciting. Did you get involved with that, with uh, Marty's show? Did you hear no, much about that? No. Uh, well, I know he talked about it. I'm surprised that, uh, that there aren't people that, uh, even if they would do a tape and uh, send it in, I'm sure that we might be able to find somebody that was interested in doing some editing. We did have a couple of young college boys here a year or so ago that were really heavily into that, and uh, whether or not they would be interested, if they were, I'm sure there are others around. Mm -hmm. What I would like to see here, was, of course, is more uh, school-age uh, young school? people. Well, I'd like to start them a little sooner than that. In my own mind, I, I envision at some time uh, getting some seventh and eighth graders involved here so that you could have some of them through high school. So maybe at first they would not be expert, but then which of us is? But by the time they were, say, uh, juniors, they would be pretty, pretty uh, well set in not only in their capabilities, but in the things they wanted to do. And I think that if they were doing the things that they wanted to do, if there were enough of them, then the things that we wanted to see done would be a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. Do you because ever there'd see be enough variety and enough uh, different attitudes. Some people want to edit, some would want to do camera work, some would want to direct or produce. Or they could produce directed. They could do both there. That's, you know, not uh, as I see it. If they can do it in movies, they can certainly do it in television. Right. Is there any reason why a seventh grader couldn't come down and learn how to run camera? Not in my mind. I'm a, I'm a volunteer teacher at Shashin Tech, and I, I'm dealing with uh, uh, freshmen all the time, and I think they're the very receptive now. Of course, they're ninth graders, I know, but they're really only a year and a half away. And I think that you could get them in here and show them the basics of, of running uh, the, at least the vid cams. Perhaps the studio cameras would require a little more. And of course, at, for their size, they would probably have to get some milk crates for them to stand on to run these cameras. But the vid cams, they can still carry them on their shoulders, yeah. or they can get the tripods down low enough so that they could do a job. And they can sit in front of the editing machine. They could sit out in the control room with the earphones on and talk. They could direct. I'd they, like to get they some They know Boy what Scouts. looks good to them on TV. I'd like to get some Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts down here. Um, if any, any viewers out there are Boy Scout or Girl Scout leaders and would like to tour the facility with the kids, tell them to come down because that would give them the, their first look at television. And then by the time they hit, 
say 12, 13, 14, they could catch that television bug. Um, you, you've seen, you know, being at Shashin, you've seen the, uh, the kids play on the computers. Oh, certainly. They're, they're whizzes. I oh, can't certainly. figure it many, out. Many of them are. Yeah. Many of them are. And television's the same thing. We, you get we, them started early. We had, we had uh, one, uh, one young boy here from the, from the high school, and he, he did some amazing things, but then he went on to, uh, to uh, school, you know, further education, and uh, we lost him by attrition, which is <laughs> what I expect to happen. With That's why I think that we need a, a cadre of, of young people in here, and that's why I would prefer to see them starting in the middle schools. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure, one, there are enough young people coming along, two, enough of them to have the interest, and three, uh, communications-wise, television's got to be the way to go, because why else would all the newspapers be shutting down? There's only two left in Boston. I can, I can personally remember when there were eight. I mean, there are small ones, you know, but uh, the, only, the only name papers are the, are the Herald and the Globe. And if I could add, you know, a lot of the people out there, their parents have camcorders already. And that's what we have. True, true. We have the exact same thing. Ours may be slightly more sophisticated, mm -hmm. but that's only an extra button or two, an extra bell or whistle. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they have the basic knowledge because mom and dad have a camcorder or a little film camera or a Polaroid camera. You know, they have that already. As long as they don't have any bad habits, we have to unteach them. That's all. <laughs> That's the only, that would be the only drawback to that. But I, I don't think that they've had time to use them enough to develop any really bad habits. You know, nothing that can't be overcome. Quickly, what's going to happen in March? Here? For you. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know, <laughs> truly. I, I mean, I'm, I'm spread a little thin now, so I probably will not take on another job. But we, in our own bylaws, we've stated that the, the directors can only serve two terms, and I will have served two. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that uh, unless I were to resign and uh, come in a you know, consecutive, that says, you know, I could come back at a future time. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure that, uh, well, one that I want them and two that the other directors would want me to. <laughs> I'm not sure of either one. All the members at WCTV can become part of the board of directors. So if you're interested, please um, send a letter to WCTV, care of me. Karen Kirk, and uh, I'll forward that to the Board of Directors. Um, w Talk to WCTV has been sponsored in part by AAA Cartel Cleaning Company. Um, I think next week I don't have a guest. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. I could be wrong. Uh, but please tune in to talk to WCTV. Um, oh, Pat Hoffman? We're not sure. We're not sure if Pat Hoffman's going to be the guest. I'm sorry. Um, but tune in. Talk to WCTV Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Ooh, a quick call. Hello, you're live on Talk to WCTV. Do you have a question? No? OK. Then we're going to wrap up tonight's show. Please join us each week on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. And the show Talk to WCTV is re-cable cast many times during the week. So if, you, if a friend didn't see Charlie Gilbert tonight, then I think you're going to be on two or three or four more times so you can catch Charlie um, on Talk to WCTV all week. Um, for the staff here, who is Mark Blair directing and Paul Dion behind camera, I'd like to thank you and wish you to have a good week. And I'll see you next week live on Talk to WCTV. Good night.